Friday. Hey! <laughs> oh. Sorry, that just kind of picks me up a little bit when I say that. I don't know why. It just kind of makes me happy. I think because Fridays are my happy times when we're not working. We're just, you know, relaxing and getting stuff done around the house. Kind of makes me happy that I get a weekend <laughs> off. So, um, I survived the week again. Um, hot at times. We did some extra work. I think it was Monday. Yeah, Monday I did extra work, which was... It was only two houses. However, I was just, like, not thrilled with the extra work, but I did it, and I survived, so... <clears throat> and then work Tuesday. I had Wednesday off. I didn't... I was, like, deciding whether or not if I should film that day or film today. I was, like, film Friday, because there's not much to update on a Wednesday. And I kind of just wanted to get stuff done. So yeah, um, so we got a new washer and dryer, and for some odd reason, it's whoever, I'm not going to say names, but hooked up the wires, or the hook up the cold and the hot backwards. So we've been wondering why it's been so, we've been putting on cold, that's what our usually wash we do, we don't do hot, we usually do cold, because save electricity that way. <clears throat> save some money in some, some type of way. And then plus our clothes don't usually need, our clothing and bedding doesn't usually need hot, so we don't do that. Anyway, um, we thought we had made a mistake and pushed the wrong button because it's different from our old wash and dryer. It's a little touchy. You have to actually make sure you're push pressing the right things. Instead of like doom doom and then start, it's more like you've got to pay attention where you're pushing. <clears throat> um, but anyway, so we were putting it on cold for the longest time and not realizing it was not switched. It wasn't switched. It were what switched. Um, so we're like wondering why our clothes are all hot afterwards usually it's supposed to be cold and then someone our shower upstairs is hooked up to the same shower um thing as the washer and dryer the water pump there we go that's the right word and so it's hooked up and so i was washing something in the wash and someone was about to take a shower and realizing the water was cold yeah <laughs> Cause the washer was on and and wondering why it was put on cold <clears throat> even though it was put on cold why is it and then we checked out the washer and it was hot so water's hot so we've got that mixed up and we're gonna I don't know if it's been switched over and I still got laundry to do so I'm guessing I'm gonna have to check it out see if it's working or not I'm don't know if it's been switched over I guess we'll find out I have to experiment and see if it is. I'll put it on cold first, see if the water is warm and if it's hot or whatever. Then I'm going to have to switch it to hot until it gets switched over. But anyway, so that's been our little dilemma the last couple of weeks. I mean, at least it's working. We got a good working washer and dryer. It's just electric bills could be a little high <laughs> in this month, I guess. Anyway, um,. So yeah, that's that. And then yesterday, we, it was kind of a long day. We had two houses on Monday, two, four on Tuesday, rest on Wednesday, and then four yesterday, and then rest today. So it's kind of nice sometimes to have the break in between. However, 
I say however. Anyway, I digress. The first house that we were on yesterday, Mom and I were discussing. Sometimes we have, like, discussions while we're cleaning. We're multitasking, by the way. Um, discussions or in the car or whatever, but we happen to be in the first house. We're talking about all of us going to the same church and where we should all go because... Yeah, um, I'm not going to kind of discuss it, all of it right now, but we're going to have that discussion and have the process because I think it is necessary that we're all going to the same church, so. Anyway, I'll give you updates later when that happens, but right now I'm not going to go into full detail because we haven't had discussion as a family yet, or my, I don't know if my, my mom's, if we're all going to have it as a family or if it's just going to be the parents. I don't know. But I think we all should discuss it together. But that's just me. <clears throat> I guess we'll find out. Um, and then, because we're, we're on a townhouse. So the first the first level is the basement. And then the second is like the main where, where the kitchen and the living room. And then the first is where all the bedrooms are. So we were on the main level at that time. But downstairs before that, I had... I was just praising God and having, you know, a good time. I was, you know, I'm trying to make, motivate myself to get going and clean and stuff. So I was having a God moment. And I was having, entering the presence of God. And, of course, being the way I am, having the gifting of speaking in tongues, I was all of a sudden speaking in tongues while singing. I've been finding myself the last couple of years doing that. Now I'm like, <laughs> it's like a wow moment. Like, wow, that was good, you know. So I enjoy myself when I am able to sing while speaking in a different language. I just find it absolutely amazing how God works in that way. Anyway, I was having that downstairs, but when we got to the main level, Mom and I were talking about that, and then she went on third level to clean, and I was still vacuuming and stuff down the main level. And I was having a conversation with God, basically, or having... Yeah, I guess it was a conversation. I mean... I was kind of just having a conversation in itself, but I was just having, I think it was a few years back, I was struggling with the idea of, um, I kind of going back, if you've been keeping up with the vlogs all this time, I had a moment in my life where I was uncertain of moving away, I was having this conversation and with mom and with myself and with God and I was struggling with the idea of moving away in general but also the fact that if I got married would I be okay with moving away far away from my parents or mainly Zach and mom because they've been my life I've been with them all my life and Zachary's all of his life and so it struggled I struggled with the idea and we were in a horrible place as far as just going through depression, going through anxiety, and just not knowing, and just concert bickering with each other, and so we're just having struggles with the family as general, and then the parents' marriage has been always rocky, but anyway, um, I was struggling with the idea of moving away, and I was crying and boohooing, I was like, struggling with the idea, and then God conferred me yesterday, I've been noticing I've been okay with the idea of moving away if God were to give either Ricky a position, a new position, or work either down south, closer where work is, or if wherever, just moving wherever outside of Maryland if we should move, if God led us to wherever, or if I got married and found someone that you know, long ways off across the country or wherever, middle, wherever in the U.S., would I be okay with that? And I've confirmed, I'd felt at peace with the idea of moving. And I was like, okay, this is good. Um, I felt at peace, I truly felt at peace um, with the idea of moving and um, whether I was whether it's our family moving or if our um, 
sorry I'm getting a little emotional because I'm just an emotional person but it's a good emotion it's I'm happy and at peace moment um anyway but I'm I felt at peace whether I was moving uh, we move as a family or if we move as um or if I just moved personally so I have felt at peace with that and I told mom and she's like rejoicing and happy with that so I th as a family as a whole we're coming together we're working together it's been a slow process I know a lot of people have been concerned about our family as far as why we're so slow at things why this why that why we moved why have we done this why are we going to sub churches blah 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 and what I've been concerned about me a lot I know a lot of friends and family it's those who are new subscribed here just take our word for it. I know a lot of you don't know me that are subscribed to me and those who are watching my videos. Those who are friends and family are watching this. This is for you, not for those who don't know my family. Dilemma. But um, just I want people to know that they need to trust the process. <sighs> just like the title I'm going to put to this. Um, trust God that we're going to get through this. Yes, it's been a slow process. It has been an ongoing thing a lot of us held ourselves back I can testify this a lot of us were just stubborn I can only talk for myself basically but I've held myself back I have noticed I did not want to grow up that was my issue I had a hard time allowing myself to grow up my mom has done the very best she can for both of my brother and I throughout the years She's provided for us and survived and has gotten through a lot of crap that has been thrown at her. And we have succeeded through that process. Um, God has been merciful. We've relied on God, especially her throughout the years. And she has brought us out of the pit. So, I've never thought my mom was a bad person. She has provided for us for a lot of things. <laughs> there you go again. Um, and so I'm grateful for her for a lot of things. I have never thought of her as a bad person or as a bad mom, but a lot of people have looked down on her and thought the worst of her. And it hurts when it's family. It really does. And yes, she has taught told me a lot of things that family has done in the past and it hurts hearing that has happened on both sides and then of course I saw the process growing up here and there with going into Ricky's family's wealth and all the things that has happened some things I forgot because that's just how my mind works it's disappeared but other things I do remember and it still hurts and then through the process of people treating me the way people have treated me because I'm slow mentally slow so <clears throat> I appreciate all the things that people have suggested for me growing up thinking <clears throat> they knew what was best but at the same time with people accusing my mom being a bad mom or just simply not realizing they were suspe suspicious of her doing the bad, wrong things has definitely hurt us and it triggers us as a, as a family whenever one of us hurts we all hurt <laughs> and so now people have been my family has been better at expressing their gratitude of all of us succeeding especially mom with her graduation and everything however there's still been moments that they've been suggesting moments especially when it comes to mine <clears throat> that it still triggers us as at times where we think we're 
they might be suggesting good things, but they're at the same time they're triggering moments like, oh, we're bad people, like, oh, or just mo. I don't know if I'm expressing myself right, but anyway. Long story short, we want people to trust the process of how God is getting through our lives. We are slow because God knew that we were going to get <laughs> through the process is going to be slow. But at the same time, we're trusting that God is, we're seeing the fruition. People don't realize our family dilemma and our how we work and how this this and that i am going to have a life mom already agreed to me if you've been following me you already know what i want to do for as far as a career and mom's on board with it and i'm happy to say that because i'm like yes finally she agrees with me on something um so yeah i have um a career path that i want to do I think I'm thankful for all those who are concerned about me, but trust God through the process. God is slow but surely getting us through the process. He knows where we're going to move. He knows where we're going to live. He knows where <laughs> between Ricky and Mom and I, and even possibly Zachary, what we're going to do in the future. And as far as me meeting a future husband, I am trusting the process of that too. And so I do believe he's coming in the process of this and it's going to happen. We all need to trust the process. So, just like that goofball, I'm not sure if the younger generation won't know what I'm talking about, but the older generation will know of the, I don't know, that psychopath, that, I don't know if it was a psychopath, but it's the goofy kind of psychopath character. It wasn't Gomer or Gober on the Andy Griffith show is what I'm referring to. That guy that used to, I don't know, the one episode where he said, hush. <laughs> That's what I want you guys to hush your opinions, hush your suggestions, and all I'm saying for you to do is pray. That is what you should do instead of come at us with all this naggering about what we should be doing instead please pray through the process of this i want you guys to sincerely pray and those who don't know they are still prayer warriors you do, i want you to pray as well there are my followers the jesus crew on here just please pray for us trust the process of how god's going to get us through he's getting to us we're seeing the process it's just a matter of timing God's timing is on his timing, not ours. And we've had to learn that process. So please just instead of coming at us, nagging us, whatever you want to call it, pray for us instead and giving us the wisdom what to do and how to do it and trust God that he's going to see us through. So that is just in a, in a nutshell. I wanted to kind of give you an update what's going on, what's happening with our family dilemma and some of the things that have been kind of bothering us as a family especially my mom I feel like she's been attacked so many times and I want her to stop feeling those triggers all the time because it breaks my heart when she's being triggered and then I get triggered because she's crying and then I cry so anyway I'm gonna stop trying to cry <laughs> um anyway whether they're happy tears or sad tears or whatever. And I have to get myself going because I've got chores to do. So, yes. Pray. Trust the process. And then the next time you see me, we're going to get to Bible time. So...
Sorry for that brief intermission there, but <laughs> let's get back to what we we're reading. The daughters throughout the tribes of Israel who are in line to inherit property must marry within their tribes so that all the Israelites will keep their ancestral property. No grant of land may pass from one tribe to another. Each tribe of Israel must keep its allotted portion of land. The daughters of Ziphlehad did as the Lord commanded Moses. Mela, Terzah, Hagla, Milka, and Noah all married cousins on their father's side. They married into the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. Thus their inheritance of land remained within their ancestral tribe. These are the commands and regulations that the Lord gave to the people of Israel through Moses while they were camped on the plains of Moab beside the Jordan River across from Jericho. Hmm. I am so grateful for that we do not have to marry within our own family members. That First of all, there's a lot of issues with that if you do that. Um, of course, back then, they didn't have as many people back then, so yes, they had to marry it within their own family, and it was acceptable back then, but nowadays, it's it's kind of frowned upon, Ugh. for obvious reasons. Anyway, we're getting into Deuteronomy, yay, it's a different book of the Bible, so that's going to be great. All right, so now... Thank you, Lord, as always, for your living, breathing word. Let's get into devotion time. Um. Okay. I think I've already read this one, so I'm going to go into this one, which is called Justice to Come. And we're going to read out Jeremiah... 17. Jeremiah. Where are you? There we are. Jeremiah 17. 17. Verses 5 through 10. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans and who rely, sorry, rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. They are like studded shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an inhabited salty land. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Much trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Within the hearts of people, both young and old, there is a desire for justice. Evil deeds should not go unpunished and good deeds should not go unrewarded. The innocent should not suffer and the guilty should not go free. What's fair is fair. Yet time and again, it seems that life is not fair. Vicious criminals get off because of legal technicalities, while little children die of AIDS. Where is the justice in that? Far too often it seems there is none, and the pronouncement that life is not fair does not help. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind, to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. At times we need to be reminded that God, who sees the hearts of all mankind, will set everything right in his own perfect time. While some evil deeds will not go, will not, sorry, while some evil deeds will fail to get their just reward here and now, in the end there is no doubt that justice will be served. How does knowing this influence your desire to get even with others when they have wronged you? Don't get me wrong, I've had issues in the past where I've had 
situations I got so frustrated with people and I wanted to seek revenge and I don't know if I followed through with anything potentially I don't try to because it's, it doesn't work <laughs> um, but overall yeah I do get angry but I try not to seek revenge or it's just it's pointless it's you might as well forget people even though it hurts and yeah, it does hurt, but it's better. God tells, tells us that we need to forgive our enemies or those who are hurting us, whether they are our loved ones or complete strangers. We are supposed to forgive one another no matter what. So, so over the, I think we should just, overall, I think we should just learn to forgive people. You don't always have to like them or like the action behind it, but forgiving is important in life. Realizing what God judges, not only our actions, but also our thoughts, what are some changes you would make in your life right now? Hmm, good question. Good question. Um, obviously, which, well, do I want to get into specifics, do I? Um, overall, I would just say, if anything that I'm doing that I know is sinful, I would go right to God and ask God to please forgive me for this. I would instantly say, okay, this is not good. I need to make it better with God and in my into my heart and say, okay, this isn't good. Let's fix this situation. So I can't say anything specific because I really can't think of anything, but when a situation happens, sinful actions happen occasionally throughout the day or week or whatever, I ask God to please forgive me. So, yeah. So that is um, Bible time for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, keep on smiling. Stay positive. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.